Welcome to today's video where we explore a critical aspect of cybersecurity that acts as a shield against cyber threats. Imagine your organization's network as a fortress with valuable data and services housed within. But how do we protect this fortress from external attacks? In the dynamic world of cybersecurity, one term stands out. Demilitarized zone or DMZ. It's not just a buzzword, it's a strategic defense mechanism. Today we delve into how a DMZ works using a real world example and a compelling case study. In the vast landscape of internet, security breaches are unfortunately not uncommon. Let's consider an example where a prominent company faced a significant security compromise. A XYZ corporation, a leader in the industry, fell victim to a targeted attack on their web infrastructure. As cyber attackers exploited vulnerabilities in XYZ Corporation's web servers, the potential impact on users' data and the company's reputation was massive. Now let's see how having a DMZ in place could have changed the game. But before we dive deeper, let's look at some staggering statistics. According to Cybersecurity Report 2023, 67% of organizations faced data breaches in the past year, costing an average of $3.86 million per incident. So let's delve into DMZ, the silent protector of networks. And before commencing, just a quick info for you. If you are an aspiring cybersecurity professional looking for online training and certification from prestigious universities and in collaboration with leading experts to enhance your credibility, then search no more. Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity from MIT University in collaboration with EC Council should be your right choice. This course is designed to accommodate a diverse range of learners. This course requires just a bachelor's degree with a 50% of average and no prior programming experience needed. And one plus year of work experience is preferred. For more details, you can use the link mentioned in the description box and pinned comment. And if these are the types of videos you would like to watch, then hit the subscribe button, like and press on the bell icon to never miss on future content. So stay tuned with us until the end of this video and don't forget to register your opinion in the comment section below. So let's get started. So the first thing we will see is what is DMZ. So the DMZ is a buffer zone that exists between an organization's internal network and the external untrusted network, typically the internet. The primary purpose of a DMZ is to provide public access to certain services like web, email and DNS servers while keeping the minimum or internal network secure. The separation is achieved through network segmentation using firewalls to control and monitor traffic flow. I will show you the diagram for that. But before that, we'll see why we need DMZ. So let's consider a scenario where we will be operating without a DMZ. So imagine a company, we will name it as XYZ Enterprise, which provides online services and hosts its web servers directly within the internal network without utilizing a DMZ. So Let's see. So this will be the scenario for that. So an attacker discovers a vulnerability in XYZ Enterprise's web server software. So it will get direct access to internal network. Exploiting this vulnerability, the attacker gains unauthorized access to the web server. So with direct access to the internal network, the attacker navigates through the internal systems, potentially compromising sensitive data and critical infrastructure. So the consequences without DMZ you can see that is the unrestricted access. So the attacker having breached the web server gains direct access to the internal network without any barrier. The second is data compromise. Sensitive customer data, proprietary information and critical systems are at risk of being compromised. And you can see like you could have the third consequences that could be the widespread impact. The attacker can move laterally potentially affecting multiple systems and causing widespread damage. So now you could see ki why we need a DMZ. So the first reason we could give is isolation of external access. So with DMZ, a DMZ acts as an isolated zone, allowing public services like web servers to be hosted separately from the internal network. In case of a breach, the impact is confined to the DMZ only. And without DMZ, operating without a DMZ exposes the entire internal network to potential threats, allowing attackers unrestricted access. And then we have controlled access points. So with DMZ, dual firewalls control and monitor traffic, ensuring that only authorized and necessary traffic passes between the external and internal networks without DMZ. Without controlled access points, there is a higher risk of unauthorized access to critical internal resources. And there will be reduced attack surface also. 
So this is why we need DMZ. Now let's move and see the diagram for the DMZ. And you could see that there are two firewalls. This is the enterprise LAN. And then we have one firewall. And then we have the DMZ network. And then the next firewall. And then it's connected to the internet. So let's see the architectural components for a DMZ. So there is the external firewall. The first line of defense that is in the right side that is positioned between the external network, internet and the DMZ. So it filters incoming and outgoing traffic based on security policies allowing only specific authorized traffic to enter the or exit of the DMZ. And then comes the DMZ network. So this hosts the service that are accessible from the external network. This includes servers like web servers, email servers and DNS servers. These services are isolated from the internal network but accessible from the internet. And then we have internal firewall. So this serves as the second line of defense located between the DMZ and the internal network or the enterprise LAN. It provides a further layer of filtering ensuring that only traffic meeting the strict test security criteria can access the internal network. So this was about the architectural components. Now we will understand the operational flow for this. So in the operational flow, first we will see the incoming traffic. So incoming traffic from the internet is first intercepted by the external firewall. So based on predefined rules, the firewall determines which traffic can process to the DMZ. So this typically includes requests for web pages, email communication and DNS queries. Server handling in the DMZ. Now we will see the server handling in the DMZ. So once in the DMZ, the traffic is directed to the appropriate server. For example, web requests go to the web server, email traffic to the email server, so etc. These servers are configured to handle requests from the internet, process them and if necessary, initiate outgoing responses. And then we have restricted internal access. So if a service within the DMZ needs to communicate with the internal network, for example, a web application requiring access to a database, the internal firewall evaluates this request. Only traffic confirming to the most stringent security policies is allowed through. This minimizes the risk of external threats reaching the internal network. And then we have outgoing traffic. Responses from the DMZ servers are sent back through the external firewall to the requesting users on the internet. The internal firewall ensures that any communication from the DMZ to the internal network is legitimate and safe. So these were the operational flow. Now we'll see the security mechanisms. So the first mechanism is firewall policies. Define which types of traffic are allowed or blocked at both the external and internal firewalls. And then we have intrusion detection and prevention systems, IDPS, that is deployed within the DMZ to monitor for and act against malicious activity. And then we have service isolation. So services in the DMZ are limited to what is absolutely necessary for public access, reducing the potential attack service. And then we have regular monitoring and update. So continuous monitoring and traffic and regular updates to services and security devices help maintain the security posture of the DMZ. So these were the security mechanisms. Now we'll see the purpose of a DMZ. So the first purpose is network segmentation and isolation. So the primary purpose of a DMZ is to create a physical or logical subnetwork that separates an organization's internal network from external networks such as the internet. This separation ensures that any external access is limited to the DMZ, thereby isolating the internal network from direct exposure to the outside world. And then the next purpose is controlled access to services. By placing services that need to be accessible from the internet, such as web servers, email servers, and DNS servers into the DMZ, organizations can control and monitor access to these services without exposing their core internal network. So these are the purpose, and now we'll see the benefits of a DMZ. So the first benefit is enhanced security. So the DMZ provides an additional layer of security. It acts as a buffer zone where incoming traffic from the internet can be analyzed, authenticated, and logged before reaching the internal network. In case of an attack, the DMZ can limit the threat to the exposed services, protecting the rest of the network. And then we have isolation of internet-facing services. So services within a DMZ are separated from the internal network, which means that if a service is compromised, the attacker still does not have direct access 
to the internal network and sensitive data. This isolation helps in containing potential damage. And then we have improved traffic management. With the DMZ in place, organization can better manage and control traffic flow to and from the internet. This includes applying detailed rules of traffic routing, prioritization and blocking, thereby improving the overall efficiency of network traffic handling. And then we have regulatory compliance. So many regulatory standards require that sensitive data be protected from unauthorized access. A DMZ helps in achieving compliance by providing a secure way to offer necessary public services while safeguarding internal data. And then we have the next benefit that is facilitated service management. So hosting services in a DMZ simplifies management and monitoring of these services as they are logically grouped in a separate network. This arrangement makes it easier to apply patches, perform updates and monitor for anomalies specifically for internet facing services. And now we'll see the last benefit that is scalability and flexibility. So DMZ allows organizations to add new services or scale existing ones without impacting the security or performance of the internal network. It provides a flexible framework that can be adjusted as the organization's needs changes. And there you have it folks. We hope you enjoyed this insightful tutorial. If you like this session, then like, share and subscribe. If you have any questions, then you can drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.